In this tutorial, we're going to explore the power of macros in RailClone. Macros enable you to create your own nodes by encapsulating parts or even entire graphs inside a simplified interface. To illustrate, we're going to show you how to convert this relatively complex graph into this much more efficient macro. And it's just a matter of a few clicks. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the scene file from our website. The graph, which was originally developed in response to a question from one of our users, has a myriad of handy features. It allows you to use a spline to determine the deck height of a bridge. If you add a surface, it adds supports that automatically calculate the distance to the ground. And you can control various other aspects, such as the bottom padding, the termination of the supports on the end, so you can have either the start or the end or both or neither, the direction of the planks on the deck, one of two types of handrail, and even the spacing of supports and handrail posts. And you can adjust the brace size to determine the height of the support's diagonal braces. So now you've seen what this powerful graph can do, let's simplify it into a macro that you could reuse. So you begin by creating a new macro node, and then select the entire graph, excluding the macro node of course, and then right click to copy it, or use Ctrl and C. Now we'll open the macro node subgraph in a new tab by double clicking on it and then paste the copied graph here. Now if you switch back to the main graphs tab, you'll see your new macro. From RailClone 6 onwards, all base objects are automatically converted into inputs and numeric nodes, including drop-down lists, are turned into properties. Although we don't need it for this graph, I also want to take a moment and mention the output node. This node allows you to add a single output to a macro so that you can create macros that can be used as part of a graph rather than replacing the whole graph as I'm doing in this demo. Depending on the type of macro you want to create, you can change the mode so that it outputs geometry, in which case you'd choose the segment option, or a value, in which case you'd choose numeric. In this case, as I've said, the macro doesn't need an output, so I'll just remove it. And essentially that's it. Creating macros in RailClone 6 is a simple case of copy and paste. We could leave it here, but let's take the opportunity to look at some additional options to tidy up the parameters panel and change the order of the inputs. So to change the order of the inputs, we'll return to the macros graph and then navigate to the macro menu at the top of the window and select define inputs order. From this interface, you can select an input and then use the arrow keys to move it to a more logical position. For example, I will group the deck inputs, the handrail inputs, and the support items together. In RailClone 6, you can also organize your parameters. So again, navigate to the macro menu in the macro graph and select define parameters order. Apart from changing the order of the parameters using these arrows, you can also add labels to create logical categories. To add a category, click on the plus button and then type in a name. To position it, you just use the arrow keys as you would do with the parameters. In this example, I'll organize them into categories, again based on settings for the deck, the handrail, and the supports. And then once you return to the main graph and select your macro, you'll see your newly organized parameters in the properties panel. So now we've got our macro functioning correctly, let's tidy up this graph by moving all the segments, spline, and surface nodes, along with the macro, off to one side, and then delete everything else and then reattach the nodes to their corresponding input in the macro. I've sped this process up a little bit for the video. When it's done, you can now see a much simpler graph with easy access to parameters available directly in the macro. Now we've invested some time creating useful macro, we might want to share it, but we want to restrict access to the graph. With RailClone 6, you can password protect your macros. To do this, simply navigate to the macro menu inside the macros tab and select protect by password. Enter a password, click OK, and you're done. The next time you or someone else tries to access it, a password will be requested. So now we've created a macro and protected it, you want to share your macro with other users, or maybe just have it for your archives. In order to save a macro, you right-click on it and navigate to the Macro Save option. Just enter a file name and click Save. If your macro was password protected, the resultant file will be encrypted so you can safely share it. To load a saved macro into a new graph, create a new macro node, right click and select load from. Find the RCM file and click open, easy as that. And that really wraps up our tutorial on how to leverage the power of macros in RailClone 6. 
By following these steps, you can create your own nodes, simplify complex graphs, and even protect your work. We hope this tutorial was helpful and has inspired you to explore more of what RailClone can do. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. We regularly upload tutorials and guides like this one to help you get the most out of RailClone.